Guys, this is the eighth video um, in our formula on chemical names and um, formula, chemical formulas, names and formula math. So what we're going to talk about today is where does a molecular formula come from? Because at one point, all of the formulas for all the compounds were unknown. <clears throat> so what are we going to do? How are we going to find, let's say we go to the Amazon and we're doing research down there and we find a chemical in a specific plant. And it, it seems to be pretty promising in that it's going to help us um, fight cancer. We need the chemical formula for that compound. So here I have a completely unknown formula. How do I get its molecular um, formula? So we start with what's called the empirical formula. The empirical formula is a formula in lowest common terms or lowest common denominator. So for example, if I have glucose, which is C6H12O6, the empirical formula for this is CH2O. What I've done is I've divided everything by six to put it in lowest terms. Or if I have N2O4, what would be the empirical formula for this? Did you say NO2? That would be correct. So in a sense, an empirical formula, if we're going to define this, is a molecular formula reduced to lowest common term, lowest common denominator, put in lowest common values. So why do we even care about this? Why do we want this? Well, this is going to be our stepping stone to solving for molecular formula. So before you can find a molecular formula, you have to find an empirical formula. And let's quickly talk about what these subscripts mean. Now, we mentioned this back, I think, in one of our previous videos. I can't remember exactly which one. But what we said was, you guys previously learned that these were the number of atoms in a compound. A better way to talk about the subscripts is to look at them as a mole ratio. So in other words, I could say, instead of saying a molecule of glucose has six atoms of carbon, 12 atoms of hydrogen, and six atoms of hydrogen, I could say it has six moles of carbon, 12 moles of hydrogen, and six moles of oxygen. And that may not sound like a big distinction, but it kind of matters because what we're going to do is we're going to use the mole ratio to find the empirical formula. So these two are tied together. Over here, we have the steps. So um, we're gonna go through each of these on a sample problem. And then we're going to, in the next video, work another sample problem, because this is just one. And I want you to have more than one. So at the end, we're going to have our empirical formula. And you can see here, we start with our percent mass of the elements. So what we have to do is we're either going to start here or here. Uh, usually, the more common place to start, and since we're doing a sample problem, I'm going to go ahead and change colors. Usually, the most common place to start is here. So the problem will say, here is a compound and it's 78.1% boron and 21.9% hydrogen. So this is step number one. What is its empirical formula? So the first thing you're going to do is list your elements with their percent in decimal form. So I want to have boron and I want to have hydrogen. I have 0.781% boron, and I have 0.219% hydrogen. Now, hopefully you remember to go from percent to decimal. You have to divide by 100. I just kind of did that automatically. We have to go from mass to grams. So this is step two. Sometimes a problem will give you grams, and you can just skip all of this altogether. You can just kind of let that go. But in our case, we're starting with percent mass. Well, to get to grams, assume you're going to have 100 grams of a sample because it's all going to be a ratio. It's all going to be proportional. So it doesn't matter if you don't actually have 100 grams of sample. Well, if you take 0.781 times 100 grams, you take 0.219 times 100 grams, 
it's going to give you 78.1 grams and 21.9 grams. Again, it doesn't matter that you don't actually have 100 grams because it's all going to be proportional. So the next step, it says use the atomic weights. We're going to convert grams to mole. So we're going to do a gram to mole conversion. And I would say uh, use, instead of using the atomic weights, use the um, molar mass, molar mass of the element. So I'm going to need conversion factors. If I'm going from grams to mole, that means I need the molar mass. So what's the molar mass for boron? Boron, let me grab my periodic table here, is 10.8. I can write it down. So 10.8 grams of boron in one mole of boron. And hydrogen, of course, is one. So I have one gram of hydrogen in one mole of hydrogen. So I'm going to use these values to convert this to moles. Um, yeah, I think I can squeeze that in. I should have written these a little bit further apart. Um, let's see. So 78.1 grams. Grams is on the top, so I have to flip this. This is going to be times one mole over 10.8 grams. And the hydrogen is gonna be times one mole over one gram. So moles of hydrogen, I'm going to have uh, 21, whoops, 21.9. And if I take 78.1 and I divide that by 10.81, I get 7.22 moles of boron. This is hydrogen, this is boron. All right, so I'm now at step three. So this was step one, this was step two. I'm now at step three. So the last thing to do is to take these moles and to get to the empirical formula. Well, remember we just said a little bit ago that these subscripts are our mole ratio. So if I look at this mole ratio, that will give me my empirical formula. So how do I do this? I divide by the smallest number. I divide by the smallest number. So I'm going to take this divided by 7.22, and I'm going to take this divided by 7.22. 7.22 divided by 7.22 is 1. 21.7 divided by 7.22 is 3. That means that for every boron atom, I have three atoms of hydrogen, and my empirical formula is going to be BH3. You'll notice I didn't put a one here. That's because it's always assumed. When you have a one, you don't have to write it in because we assume that you have a one. So on this one, it was nice and clean. And when I divided by those, my my when I found my mole ratio and I divided by the smallest mole, um, I got a one to three ratio. And that's not always the case. So in the next video, when we look at how we turn this into a molecular formula, we're going to start off with another sample problem, uh, empirical formula. What happens when you don't get a, a whole number ratio here? You have to do things a little bit differently. Okay, so let's continue empirical formula in the next video, and uh, we'll wrap it up there.